So in the previous lessons, we learned how to solve these quadratic equations using either factoring or graphing. Now we're going to look at how we can do it using the quadratic formula. And in this method, we can solve for exact values when the values are still irrational, so they're not going to be factorable. And we're just going to get a number we're going to have to round if we do it using graphing. So first, if I'm finding the roots of the equation, x squared plus 7x minus 18 by inspection, then I'm just going to find two numbers that multiply to negative 18 but add up to positive 7, which is going to give me x plus 9 and x minus 2 is equal to 0. So either x plus 9 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0 x would equal negative 9 here, x is going to be equal positive 2 here, and I can say the roots are negative 9 and 2. For example, b it says find the roots of the equation by decomposition because there's no common factor and I have an a value that is not equal to 1. So in this case, I would take the 6 times negative 12, and that's going to give me negative 72. And I need two factors of that that add up to negative 1, and they're going to be 8 and negative 9. So I need to split up this middle term and say that I have 6x squared plus 8x minus 9x minus 12 is equal to 0. I factor by grouping, and here I'm going to say that I have 2x and 3x plus 4. And here I'm going to take out negative 3 and left with 3x plus 4. Or 3x plus 4 times 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. In the 1 case, 3x plus 4 would equal 0, which means that 3x would equal negative 4 where x would equal negative 4 over 3. In the other case, 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So 2x is going to equal 3, or x is going to equal 3 over 2. The roots are negative 4 over 3 and positive 3 over 2. When I get to example C, it says solve the quadratic equation 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. Can I solve this by either of those two methods? Well, there's no common factor, and a is not equal to 1, so no, or sorry, let's just say it can't be solved by inspection. Because A is not equal to 1. So the other possibility would be our second method, decomposition. So I'm going to take 2 times 5, and that's going to give you 10. And I need two factors of 10 that add up to negative 8. Well, 10 can be made from negative 1 and negative 10, and that would give me negative 11. Or negative 2 and negative 5, that's going to give me negative 7. And because this is all the factors of 10, It can't be solved by decomposition because there are no factors of 10 
that add up to negative 8. which means that none of my factoring methods are going to work for this. It also means that this is going to be an irrational number because I can't solve it by factoring. So then we have what's called the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is when I have it in general form, where I have ax squared plus bx plus c, then the a, the b, and the c are going to be represented by the a in the formula, by the b's in the formula, and by the c in the formula. Where if it's in general form, I can just substitute these values and it's going to give me the possibilities for x. We can see this down here. Gavin is using the quadratic formula to verify the roots of the equations on the previous page. Example A has been completed. Follows method in A and complete B. So the first thing is, he listed out what the A, the B, and the C values are. Well here the A is going to be 6. The B, because it says minus, is negative 1. And the C, because it says minus, is negative 12. And then he substituted them into the formula. So, he substituted in and said that the b's go where the b's were, the a's go where the a's were, there's two b's, there's two a's, and there's one c in the formula. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to replace the b's, so negative 1 goes here, and negative 1 goes here. We're going to replace the a's, 6 goes here, and 6 goes here, and we're going to replace the c where negative 12 goes here. And we're going to solve the three parts of this independently. We're going to simplify this, we're going to simplify this, and we're going to simplify everything inside of the radical. That's going to be our first step. So, I'm going to say that x is equal to, well, negative negative 1 is going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of, I can put all this in my calculator, bracket negative 1 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 12. And when I do that, I'm going to get 289, if I put it in properly. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 2 times 6, which is going to give me 12. Next, if I can, I'm going to simplify the radical. In this case, 289 is a perfect square, so I can just solve for what that is. I'm going to say that x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 289, which is 17 over 12. Now, because it says plus or minus, one case would be 1 plus. 17 over 12, or the other case would be the negative, x is equal to 1 minus 17 over 12. And I can simplify these again. In this case, x would equal 18 over 12, which is the same as 3 over 2. In this case, x is going to equal negative 16 over 12. I can divide the top and the bottom by 4 and get negative 4 over 3, which means the roots are 3 over 2 and negative 4 over 3 and those are the same roots that we got for example B on the last page.